Hey guys, James with Torches and Tactical, and today we're looking at the Brenite HC01 Noctua. Now this is a new headlamp from our friends over at Brenite. It just came out very, very recently, and this will give you up to 850 lumens with a total of up to 126 meters of throw. And if you're curious about that candela number, it is 4,000 candela. But in addition to that output, it does offer a secondary white, a red night vision mode, as well as one meter impact resistance, and a couple cool new features that I haven't seen in many headlamps, or in the case of one, I haven't seen it in any headlamps. But before I get into this, I do want to show you guys everything that came in the package for me. Now, this was a pre-production unit, so I wasn't able to get my hands on the actual Brenite box. They sent it to me in this plain cardboard box, and I literally didn't even get a manual, but fortunately, by the time this video uh, was supposed to go live, I was able to get all that information online. So they did ship it to me in this styrofoam, and that made sure that it stayed nice and taken care of. They did also give me a USB-A to USB-C cable to keep it charged. That's literally it as far as the packaging, so I'm going to get this out of the way. Now focusing on the headlamp, in addition to that 850 main LED that is an SST40, you do also get from that same LED a 450 lumen high mode, 105 lumen middle mode, and a 10 lumen low mode. Your strobe comes in at 450 lumens and your SOS runs 105 lumens. Now again, I did say that you do have a white auxiliary that has two separate modes itself, and that is a 60 and a 15 lumen output mode, and you have a red light that will help save your night vision if needed, and that's going to give you a 30 and a 10 lumen output. In addition to the 30 and 10 lumen output, you do also have a 20 lumen signal mode, so it will sit there and flash if it's ever needed. As far as the overall dimensions and size, this does come in at 60.3 millimeters. It is 42.3 millimeters wide and has a height of 28.7 millimeters. So, I mean, it's not, it's not that large of a unit. Uh, as far as the weight goes, now this does have a built-in battery, but remember, I did say that I would let you know of a pretty cool feature that the HCO one has as far as that battery is concerned. But with that battery, this does come in at a total of 65 grams. That's headlamp. That's the strap, that's the buckle, that's everything. And that is 2.29 ounces. So if we're looking at the actual headlamp, you'll see the two buttons up top here. Now this is your main emitter. It does sit exactly in line with the SST40 LED. So this is your main emitter switch. And then you have your red and white switch. So this will operate alternately the white and the red auxiliary LEDs. And speaking of those LEDs, let's go ahead and take a look at the face on this. Now you do receive some nice diffused panels in these auxiliary LEDs, and you have a decent size reflector for this main SST40. Now with the smooth reflector, I almost would have expected to see an SFT40, and who knows, maybe eventually I'll go ahead and swap one into this just to see how it operates. But I can tell you right off the bat that it is a polycarbonate face on this, and if you look really closely, you can see that it does show some scratches already on the surface. Now, this is a review unit, and I don't know how many people saw this before me, but I have noticed that scratches has increased ever since I got it. You can move to the bottom, and you will see a USB-C charging port. And again, this does come with that USB-C charging cord. And that will let you know that it is charging by indicating these battery indicators right here. Uh, on that face, you do have four LEDs and each one is going to represent a quarter of the battery capacity. So when all four of those are lit, you know that your battery's near or at full capacity. Now the headlamp itself, it does wear pretty well, and it indexes so you can direct that light wherever you might need it. There are quite a few clicks, and the adjustability, it's, while it's not infinite, it does have quite a few options. If you don't want to use it as a headlamp, what you can do is just pop these corners off. And you can see here that there are those steps that allow you to direct that light inside the headlamp. Now, one really, really cool thing about this, and I said I was going to show you about that battery, is this does come with a rechargeable battery built in. But if you need to, you can pop that cover, 
you can take out the factory battery and you can replace it with a couple AAA batteries. So if you have those on hand and or you're out in the field and your factory battery does go dead, you can swap it over to a couple of easily replaceable AAA cells. But if we pop this back in, you can see that the curvature here isn't the only smart choice from this headlamp strap. It does have really, really nice Brinite silk screening. And uh, to be honest, I don't know how they did it, but there are little holes in here that would help A, with breathability, and B, it almost brings about that same design from the E18 theme. And I will put a link up here in the corner. So if you want to go ahead and click on that, you can see our review of the Brinite E18 theme. But they're able to almost replicate that design in this strap. Uh, I think it turned out really well. But the Brinite appears all around. And as far as the retention goes, I mean, this is, this is something I've never seen before. And I think that it should be implemented on quite a few more. There are steps or detents that hold it in place. But you can infinitely adjust how tight you want this strap to be just with a quick turn of this dial. So if you want it to be super small, I, I mean, I don't know why you would, but if you want it to be super small, you can go ahead and just keep turning this. And it makes it really, really nice and convenient to stow this away. But when you go to put it on, all you have to do is grab these two pieces and pull out. When you put this on your head, now I am going to do a face reveal here. So prepare for this. We're going to go three, two, one, and go. Oh, there we go. Okay, here's the big face reveal of 2023. This is what James of Torches and Tactical looks like. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, technically, this is my face, like it belongs to me, but it's not my face. So <laughs> here's what the Brynite HC01 Noctua looks like. And you can see that it's a pretty wide strap. And while I have worn this quite a bit, it is super, super comfortable. Uh, the headlamp does wear a little on the large side. But with all the output, I mean, you can't get something for nothing. But when it comes to the actual tensioning, super easy to do one hand. If you need it tighter, you just rotate this clockwise and it will tighten up the strap. There's quite a bit of grip. Although there's no silicone on the inside, there is quite a bit of grip. So you're able to make sure that it's not going to move. And the extra material here, it does make it so you can put this over your hard hat or other baseball cap or anything like that. And now that you guys saw what I look like, let's go ahead and focus on the headlamp again, shall we? Because I never said I was pretty. So uh, what we can do, though, is we can go ahead and compare this. Now, I'm going to take it off of the actual headlamp strap for this, but we can compare this to the Science Sky HS3R. Now, this has been my go-to for quite some time. One thing I do like about the HS3R is the fact that it has a very, very wide strap. So again, no silicone but I don't feel like it's going to slide around. This does also have a retention system that holds it in place. And one nice thing about the HS3R is it does give you the actual strap that makes contact with your skin if you do wear it directly on your head instead of the plastic. So HS3R versus the HC01 Noctua. Now, this one does have a bit of a Fresnel lens going on, while this is a smooth reflector with a clear lens. Uh, one thing that this does have that this doesn't have is the two separate auxiliaries. Now, the HS3R does have a red auxiliary light, but it's not independently controlled with its own button. So I want to go ahead and run through the user interface here real quick, and then we'll get outside and see how it compares to the Science Sky HS3R. So first and foremost, you can turn the light on just with a simple press. And then if you press and hold, it will run through all of those modes. You have, here we go, you have low, middle, high, and turbo. And if you're on any of the lower modes, you can do a double tap. And it will go directly to the 850 lumen turbo mode. And while we can shut that off, you can go ahead and do a triple press. And that will go to your strobe. And you can do a triple press from there, and it will go to your SOS mode. Now, we'll go ahead and do one more press just to shut that off. And then with that secondary switch, you can go ahead and turn that on. And I was in red mode last. 
but you can press and hold once it's on and it'll go between the 10 and 30 lumen red mode. If you double press, it will switch over to the white auxiliary. And from here, you can press and hold. And this will go to the 15 and 60 lumen auxiliary mode. Now, let's do, let's do a double press again, go back to the red. And from here, if you do a triple press, it will go to your signal. So this does have 330 minutes or over five hours of runtime. So if you're out on the hike, you can very easily keep this with you and you'll be super easy to spot. One final thing that it does do is if you press and hold both of these switches for two seconds, you will get a, you will get greeted by a double flash. And now it's locked out. So you can keep this in your backpack or your pocket or however you decide to carry it. And you don't have to worry about it turning on. So let's go ahead and press this again. One, two. And now it turns on just fine again. So again, like I said, let's take the Brinai HCO1 Noctua and the Science Guy HS3R. Let's take them outside so you can see how the 850 lumens from the HCO1 Noctua and the HS3R with its 700 lumens, how they fare. We can see if that smooth reflector and the clear lens plays versus the Fresnel lens and the Osram P9 of the HS3R. So let's go for it. All right, guys. So before I even begin, I just want to say that I'm using a new microphone, uh, so I won't know how this sounds until post-production. But with that said, let's go ahead and begin. Okay, here we go. We have the first or lowest mode. And we'll bump up. Okay. Now this is 850 lumens from the Brinite HC01 Noctua. I mean, honestly, this looks really good. Okay. And to compare, here is the lowest mode on the HS3R. So this is much softer, uh, it does not throw as far. We're going to bump up one, bump up two, and this is 700 lumens from the HS3R. Again, much softer, uh, but as you can tell, it, uh, looking straight back, it doesn't throw quite as far as the HC01. All right, again, we have 850 lumens with a more distinct hotspot from the HC01 from Brinite. And 700 lumens, more flood from the HS3R from Science Guy. All right, guys, let's head back inside and we'll finish up. All right, guys, we pitted the Science Guy HS3R up against the show of this video, the Brunite Noctua HC01. And I wanna know what you guys thought about the beam patterns. So for me, I was actually kind of surprised at how well this Fresnel lens evenly spread out the light on the HS3R versus this clear, smooth reflector of the HC01. Now, this, even though it has the SST40 instead of that touted SFT40, it still threw a very distinct hotspot. So it makes sense that this gets the range that it gets. And I mean, if you're looking for more of a defined hotspot, for me, the Brinite makes sense. Uh, frankly, I like flood, so I do like how the HS3R brings that light out. But if you are looking for some more defined hotspot, the Brinite has you covered there. Now, with the HS3R out of the way, let's focus on some likes and dislikes. So I think my first and biggest like is the wearability of the Brinite HC01. This strap retention system is absolutely fantastic. I love that it, the whole thing just fits in such a small footprint, even though the headlamp in and of itself is rather large, but it's able to stow away, stay clean and organized. And 
I mean, if you need to get to USB-C charging, it's just right there. If you need to get to either of the modes independently, although the UI is a little convoluted and it will take a little bit of getting used to. Other than that, I think the only thing that is stand out, but not in the best sense, is the fact that this large PC lens will show all of those scratches. Now, I swear, this thing's already even more scratched than when I told you earlier in the video that it was getting scratched up. So I would have liked to have seen, I don't know, maybe some sort of coating on here to help keep it protected or some way to approach this in it not looking super worn, super fast. So guys, that is the Brenite HC01. Now I wanna know A, what you think uh, about the HC01. So leave a comment down below. I wanna know what you thought about the comparison between the HC01 and the HS3R. And finally, down in the description below, I do have a coupon code so you can save a little bit of money if you wanna pick up a Brenite Noctua HC01 for yourself. Now it's not only valid on the headlamp itself, you can get anything from the Brenite store, but this and their PT-16 are the latest and greatest. So thank you guys so much. I'd love if you guys could like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, click on that bell notification. That helps us in the algorithm so we can get our videos out to you. And we're able to make sure that we can keep doing good reviews and all the giveaways that we do. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next one.